Hello everyone. Uh, thanks for attending today's webinar. We will get started here in a minute or less. Looks like we have a lot of people joining the call so. Again, thanks everyone for attending today's webinar. <clears throat> and the panelists today are Chandra, CEO of Secport Technologies, and Virendra, Senior Technical Manager with Secport, and I'm Thiago Halan, Manager Strategic Alliances. Today, our webinar title is Our Vulnerability Scanners Giving a False Sense of Security. If you look, many organizations aren't going a day, doing a daily vulnerability scans. And even when the scans are performed, it takes months to mitigate risks consequently. And many companies are reasonably exposed to security attacks, which results in ransomware and other malware exploits. And in today's webinar, Chanda would present a better approach in discovering and mitigating security risks. So please make your questions during the webinar and we'll then answer them towards the end. And Chandra, let's get started. Thanks, Viru. Uh, thanks, uh, Thiago. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Uh, good morning to all of you. Thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule to be part of this session. I'll try and uh, make it a better use of your time. So as Thiago mentioned, the topic is our vulnerability scanners giving you a sense of false security. Uh, I think a bit of a clarity is needed on the title. Uh, having made that statement, I would like to say that uh, we are not saying that vulnerability scanning or a risk assessment as an exercise is an optional thing or a wrong thing to do. Uh, it is a very critical part of the cybersecurity strategy. Risk assessment must be done. <laughs> Uh, I'm, I'm not even saying uh, are going to be talking about false positives and false negatives uh, that typically are associated with many of the vulnerability scanners that are out there in the industry. So the, the goal here is we are doing the risk assessment exercise. How often do we do it and what is the follow through post the, the risk assessment exercise? So my area of focus is around that and uh, trying to bring out a case for continuous risk assessment and continuous risk mitigation, which is, has become a very critical requirement and need uh, for the cybersecurity industry or for, for organizations in general. Uh, so we are going to be talking about that particular topic today. So once again, uh, my name is Chandra Shekhar. I am the CEO and founder of Support Technology. I'm going to be joined by Virendra. He heads the security research for our organization. Uh, so let's get started uh, with that quick introduction. We all know the attacks are continuing to raise on a day-to-day -day basis. And um, because of vulnerabilities and misconfigurations that are there in these organization systems, the attacks are increasingly growing uh, day by day and year on year. And uh, one of the statistics says that about 80% of the attacks are targeting now uh, the endpoints because of the ease with which these attacks can be perpetrated through the endpoints. Uh, so we're going to be showing uh, one of a demo uh, of, a, of a typical attack flow. Um, so to to clearly bring out why uh, endpoints have become uh, the, the easy target for most of the attackers and exploiters. So if you look at uh, the, the 
cybersecurity uh, practices in general, most organizations believe that they have proper cybersecurity policies implemented. But uh, for one reason or the other, attacks are succeeding. So because of vulnerabilities and weaknesses that are there, uh, attackers are easily uh, able to bypass these weaknesses and, and conduct the attacks. And most of the organizations are realizing uh, the attack post an incident, and then they are looking at increasing the cybersecurity budget as a as a reaction measure, not as a prevent you or a, uh, uh, before an attack. So, or, or waking up uh, to this particular scenario before an attack would take place. So this has become uh, more or less the reality of uh, the industry today. And no organization is uh, unreachable as far as attacks are concerned. So whether it's large organizations or small ones or medium organizations or corporate type of organizations, irrespective of the vertical that they are operating in, it is not just the finance and banking uh, organizations that is usually the primary target. But these days, attackers are, are infiltrating all, all uh, uh, segments or all verticals, whether it's manufacturing or energy sector or healthcare or government institutions and all that. Now, one of the concepts that we want to introduce today is being cyber hygiene. So uh, most of the organizations are suffering uh, because of this particular thing is not being implemented properly. So not being cyber hygiene uh, is the primary cause uh, for attacks to succeed. So if you look at some of the statistics, so, so in 2015, uh, most businesses fell victim to the, the ransomware attacks. And that is when uh, the ransomware started becoming more and more popular. So it took about uh, every 40 seconds or so, uh, one new business fell victim to a ransomware attack. And if you analyze this year's statistics, we uh, that gap, I mean, that time has reduced significantly. It now takes every 14 seconds, there is a new uh, uh, ransomware attack targeting a particular business segment and uh, organizations are losing billions of dollars because of this uh, these uh, high profile ransomware attacks that are uh, taking place. And uh, most organizations are not comfortable coming out uh, in the open about a particular attack. Some of the attacks that are uh, getting published in the uh, outside world uh, are a very small part of what is actually happening uh, behind the scene. So the organizations are the, the brand. Uh, I mean, uh, a threat to the brand and all of those are uh, primary reasons why these uh, attacks are not becoming public. So we all know cybersecurity is the greatest threat and it is vouched by many uh, experts uh, from the industry. Now, and, and most organizations realize that that is the most critical uh, problem that they have to deal with. And uh, why attacks are continuing to occur is because of these vulnerabilities and uh, weaknesses that are there. And uh, whether it's a ransomware or a malware, they are able to take advantage of these open vulnerabilities and launch attacks and then spread from one system to another system till they reach the actual target, whether it's data or information or um, encrypting some highly confidential information uh, as far as the ransomware attack targets are concerned. And uh, the, the reality is that most organizations are not aware of the risks, uh, although uh, some organizations perform a monthly or a quarterly or an annual risk assessment exercise. Most organizations uh, in other ways are not aware of these uh, vulnerabilities and weaknesses and potential threats that could exploit these weaknesses. And even when organizations are aware of these risks, there is no follow through as I was saying, 
there is no mitigation. So on one hand, we do a auditing exercise once in a month or a quarter, uh, but there is no uh, mitigation that is being followed through. And we are kind of getting into the comfort zone that we are performing a periodic security auditing exercise. Typically, the industry is organized that way today that you perform a, a VAPT or what might be a risk assessment exercise periodically and we feel a sense of security just by doing that auditing exercise. But it is actually um, halfway through, uh, not even halfway through because uh, I'm going to show some of the statistics which uh, um, kind of uh, brings out the, the reason why a periodic or a, uh, auditing exercise is not being effective. So why are these organizations are under attack and why attackers are easily able to launch attacks on these organizations? So let me present some of these statistics and, uh, and bring out a case uh, of why these attacks are succeeding and what we need to do in order to prevent uh, these attacks. Now, if you look at the NIST's CVE database in 2018, about uh, 18,000 plus vulnerabilities were added into the database, which averages to about 40 to 50 vulnerability being introduced on a daily basis. And uh, whatever gets into the NIST CVE database are the publicly known vulnerability, and there is a significant number of vulnerabilities that never make into the, the NIST database at least another 30 to 40% can be easily added to that number. Now, this is a, a statistics on a day-to-day -day basis and not a monthly or a quarterly uh, numbers. And, and of course, uh, newer attacks, we are hearing about uh, high profile attacks on a daily basis. Uh, we, each of these are using some uh, these are uh, software weaknesses or vulnerabilities as I said before, and easily able to launch attacks. So every day uh, on a daily basis, uh, even our security research team is monitoring these uh, attacks that are exploiting these weaknesses. And we are invariably seeing at least one very high profile attack targeting a known vulnerability that has been there widely open since months or years and not patched. And 90% of the attacks today are targeting these weaknesses, weaknesses in the software components, operating systems, and these days people are also targeting certain hardware specific uh, uh, weaknesses, whether through the software driver or through uh, how the, the hardware is wired. Now, what is the response uh, the industry response to this is a periodic audit exercise, which is run monthly, quarterly, or biennial, or annual exercise. As I was saying earlier, we are becoming or getting into a comfort zone saying that we are doing this auditing exercise on a periodic basis and we are secure. And that is where the problem begins. And once we have these auditing exercises performed, we uh, invariably get a report that runs into thousands of pages and then the security operations team or IT operations team have the responsibility of rolling out the mitigation, which takes anywhere between one to five months post the risk assessment exercise. Now, that is a big gap. One is periodic auditing, exercise once in a month or a quarter and the amount of time that is taken to mitigate these vulnerability and that has lasted at least few months and that is a huge or uh, attack opportunity or window of opportunity for attackers or exploiters to launch attacks against these widely known uh, weaknesses starting from uh, wanna cry to look keep and all of these attacks that are taking place Invariably, all of these are targeting a particular vulnerability that has been there, known, and not patched. And uh, Microsoft also came up with statistics saying there are some vulnerabilities that are discovered at least two years before and patched, and those are not actually mitigated in significant number of their, their own deployments. And that is the primary reason why some of these attacks are, uh, are succeeding very easily.
and <clears throat> the reason why uh, this is happening is because the product ecosystem and how the industry has positioned itself uh, is, is not really supporting. Uh, the reason why I make this particular comment is that uh, we are building tools for this periodic auditing exercise, but not building tools for continuous assessment and mitigation. So that is where the problem is. Uh, auditing, as we know, is whether it's financial auditing or IT auditing or security auditing is always a secondary check and this can never be a primary uh, means of finding the problem. Uh, so even in financial auditing, we always have to make sure that the day-to-day -day, uh, tasks are done timely and internal auditing is done timely and then only go for an external auditing exercise. So, but invariably we are uh, becoming comfortable with pure external auditing exercise and not acting upon those problems. So the tool secure system is not really conducive to make this a day-to-day -day activity of finding the problems and fixing the problem and trying and automating the whole exercise so that we fare better when an external auditing is performed. So that is the whole uh, case for this particular topic. Now, at this point in time, let me pause for a few minutes and hand over to Virendra for him to show uh, a live attack that we recently analyzed. Uh, over to you, Virendra. Uh, hello everyone. Uh, I would like to share a hypothetical attack which happens uh, on a daily basis. How in the real world? So I, uh, recently we got an uh, uh, incident uh, where uh, I would like to share this. Uh, this is a hypothetical one. And his name uh, his name is John. So he got a He's a very disciplined person. He pays his taxes properly. He pays his credit card bills on a daily basis. And he was a good person. And uh, this incident happened uh, start of uh, this month. It was a salary day and uh, everyone was waiting for uh, their salary. Even John was waiting for his uh, pay. And, uh, he, and everybody was waiting uh, uh, in his company as well and uh, in that afternoon he got a mail uh, as you can see in the uh, screen he got a mail saying uh, salary got he, he got a sal his salary and uh, but uh, there was a small uh, deduction about the taxes as he pays uh, taxes on a daily basis means uh, yearly basis on time but in the mail it is mentioned that uh, uh, last year tax got directed this in the month of uh, November. So, so and he, he, he knows it might be a spam or something. He tried to check his uh, email ID properly. He checked it. It was HR at the company.com. It was proper and everything is proper. Then he got tensed. Uh, and suddenly he wanted to see what happened. And it's mentioned that to understand more about the uh, this deduction, uh, he needed to open the attachment which is attached to his email ID. so he as soon as he uh, he downloaded the attachment which we can see here uh, in the window left side window where it is mentioned john number salary dot it's a rare file and uh, he downloaded it and uh, without any thought uh, he wanted to see what happened to his salary so uh, he, on the right side, uh, there is a one more window where it is calci.exe is present. This is a path where uh, we can uh, keep any files, any applications which need, which will be launched during the uh, window startup. So whenever window starts, uh, any application present in this folder 
will be launched automatically so this is for the uh, many uh, purposes so here only uh, in the startup folder only calci.ex is there and uh, john he just wanted to see what happened to his salary so he just extracted the uh, rar file so he extracted the rar file he got the folder but without he could he without uh, knowledge there is one more file called dropbox dot back or dropbox dot exe got dropped in the startup folder so this he won't be knowing so he just extracted it uh, if i double click also when i say it like we can see only two files in this rar file so there is no dropbox dot back present in this file so he opened it and he opened he tried to open a pdf i tried to understand he saw the he saw the mail uh, he saw the pdf which is attached to it but he found that it's a fake one it's not proper the tax uh, it doesn't look genuine but he was very suspicious about it he tried to scan these files using antiviruses these pdf files they did not report anything then he thought uh, it's a mistake so after a few days uh, his system started behaving weirdly uh, like it became very slow and uh, many things start, started happening like so suddenly crashing and uh, applications started crashing and other things so. <clears throat> so what he did was uh, he was uh, he sent out that uh, he he was suspicious about those uh, files and he talked to the uh, person uh, security some security engineer and uh, he sent this rar file for uh, analyzing when we received this rar file we analyzed it and we found that it's a attack it's a targeted attack where uh, john is a victim to it so john is a victim to uh, this this attack this is a recent attack this year happened and also uh, microsoft uh, reported as per microsoft also reported uh, this winrar uh, attack has been uh, targeted at happening widely so this is a uh, research portal where microsoft published his an uh, their analysis on this uh, vulnerability so here is a typical scenario uh, what happened when microsoft analyzed this malware so a person uh, attacker will send a spear phishing mail uh, it will download uh, the person will get a mail he will download the mails which will have archive and it downloads uh, temp.vbs and powershell and all those things at the end it uh, it launched an uh, exploit which is uh, this winrar vulnerability is being assigned with a specific uh, cv number which is cv 2018 exploit and which dropped dropbox exe in the startup folder this is what happens when uh, this is a, a real attack scenario analyzed by a microsoft so similar to this uh, there are many other uh, attacks happening so we cover many other things uh, zombie land attack so this is one more attack where uh, intel uh, cpu intel cpus are the have the vulnerability so to fix these things you, we need the per, people need to up, update their uh, firmware because it's a uh, intel cpu and after this the, we also cover uh, recently we found that when, when this was published it was it was a chrome zero day attack when it was published initially uh, there was uh, there were no patches with respect to that uh, this kind of attacks can happen so we cover we cover these these are a part of customer notifications and we send out a customer notification about uh, this kind of attacks where, how they can prevent using saner and all those things and uh, uh, I, I'm, i'll hand over uh, for, uh, to chandra um, to talk more about saner how we can utilize saner 
more uh, to you, Chandra. Thanks, Phil. Uh, thanks for demonstrating uh, some of the attacks that are happening or how these attacks are succeeding. So the typical path for most of the attacks uh, is send out uh, email or some sort of a social media message or something like that, enticing the user to click on performing some action. In this particular WinRAR uh, case, it was about enticing the user to click on that particular attachment in the email. And because WinRAR had that vulnerability, uh, they were able to successfully launch an attack. Launch an attack because WinRAR had a vulnerability and using that vulnerability is able to drop a payload into the Windows startup folder. And that payload could do uh, anything, uh, anything awful, including uh, setting up a uh, console back to the command and control center or making certain changes on the system, like disabling certain security controls and all that. So this is uh, a recent one uh, that, that happened. And typically, uh, he also, Virendra also talked about some other attacks like uh, Google Chrome and uh, uh, vulnerability in uh, the, the Intel uh, CPU and all of these. So typically the response to each of these can be different. So in case of WinRare, Thankfully, there was a patch that was available. You could roll out the patch. In case of uh, the Intel issue, uh, there is a firmware update that needs to be done. And this is beyond the, the regular patch management because here are upgrading the, the driver itself. And in case of a zero day attack like Google Chrome, uh, organizations are left high and dry, so you don't know what to do. So the response in this case could be blocking access to Google Chrome uh, on a temporary basis, at least till the time Google comes up with a, uh, a fix to mitigate that particular vulnerability. So basically what I'm saying is that the, depending on the attack and the vulnerability response to each of these threats or risk is different and tools uh, must support that need of going beyond the, the, the traditional patching as the only option. So we all know uh, organizations do invest in large number of security solutions, but for some reason we are not seeing the value. So there are many tools that organizations are buying, uh, but in actual, there is no sense of security. So attacks are continuing to uh, exploit the, the weaknesses that are there and then, then cause either encrypted or whatever, depending on the, the purpose of that particular attack. So a large number of tools are there. Vulnerabilities continue to remain. Weaknesses continue to remain. The unidentified assets continue to be, uh, have no visibility to each of these, et cetera. And uh, today's uh, technology scenario is also constantly changing. So you have roaming users, PYOD type of scenarios where uh, employees are bringing their own uh, devices. And uh, so all of these are complicating uh, the, the security uh, implementation. So, you know, one of our uh, deployment where this particular organization is a healthcare institute and uh, as we all know, healthcare institutes have to be HIPAA compliant and uh, failing which there is a huge penalty that, that these organizations would have to pay. So in one of our uh, deployment uh, in uh, US, uh, this particular organization had about 1000 systems that included uh, Windows servers and Mac systems and all that. And they also obviously had invested in tools uh, performing a periodic risk assessment uh, exercise using an external uh, agency. And then they also had supposedly had a risk mitigation uh, exercise again on a periodic basis. But when we deployed a solution on these thousand uh, systems, uh, so we ended up finding there, are, there were about 1 million vulnerability, an average thousand vulnerability per system. And that is a staggering number. And an attacker 
just needs one of these to succeed and not all the thousand. Right? So depending on the, the severity of these uh, vulnerability, uh, the ease with which these vulnerabilities can be exploited, uh, these attackers could easily take down this whole organization's network and the HIPAA compliance goes for a, a task at that point. So this is the, the scenario uh, in the industry or uh, today, as well as the cybersecurity picture is concerned. So the, the need is definitely, can we have a real-time conversation with these endpoints, understand uh, what they are, and can we do a risk assessment exercise on a continuous basis as against audit driven? And can we also mitigate these vulnerabilities on a continuous basis as against uh, either not rolling out the remediation or doing it only partially or doing it late? So can it be continuous exercise? And can we also uh, do more than patching? This patching is the only option for, uh, as I said, the remedy a response to each of these risks and threats could be different. So you need to patch certainly as that is the ideal way of uh, fixing that particular vulnerability, but there are vulnerabilities where patching is probably not the only solution. So we need tools that will assist us in, in going beyond the patching need as well. And can we, of course, when I'm saying uh, right now, the industry is uh, tuned to the periodic auditing and mitigation exercise, but when I'm saying do it continuous, this means uh, adding in more resources to perform this uh, activity, which is not conducive to most organization. So can we kind of orchestrate this automation and uh, make it, uh, can we take the help of the technology to automate this process to as much extent as possible? So that is the goal basically for most organizations uh, a requirement for most organizations today now, that is our platform introducing uh, saner now it is a cyber hygiene orchestration and automation platform it will help organizations perform assessment and mitigation with, within the same console it will also identify potential threats and help respond to those threats again on a continuous and real-time basis. So our goal with Sena now as a platform is to unify all security operations from assessment to mitigation, detection and response uh, with these uh, primary capability of getting continuous visibility to all the IT endpoint system, having the ability to have real-time conversation with these endpoints and getting the security posts of these endpoints in real time and find out problems, whether it's a risk that is there, a vulnerability or a misconfiguration or a potential threat or a threat that is there and how do we respond to those. With the idea of eliminating the attack surface and preventing the attacks before an attacker is able to succeed uh, in exploiting those issues that are there and mitigate the risks, patch, and go beyond patching exercise. And can we uh, also detect these potential threats and respond to those threats in real time and automate this uh, exercise to a daily routine as against the periodic auditing and mitigation cycle. And this is what we believe is the best strategy to set up a cyber hygiene uh, practice and prevent or eliminate the attack surface. So our platform brings together multiple tools into one single console. We have six different tools at this point in time. We are introducing a seventh tool next month. And with one single console, one agent, all of these uh, use cases can be addressed. One of the other benefit of doing this is uh, uh, most organizations invest in multiple point products for each of these uh, use cases. Since we are bringing them all onto the same console, the complexity of managing each of these uh, security solutions separately is uh, avoided or eliminated. So bringing in a new vendor, all of those vendor sign up and uh, training and professional certification and bringing in the resources to uh, manage this on a 
continuous basis. All of those are investments so we can reduce the, the security uh, investment significantly because one product or one platform with multiple pools uh, available on a single console. And we've also built our platform with automation as a primary uh, goal. Uh, there are two philosophies uh, of the product, whatever issue that we find, there has to be a way to fix that particular issue. And there has to be a way to automate a significant amount of uh, routine work that is required uh, to achieve the sense of security that, that I'm talking about. So, with that quick uh, overview on the product, let me quickly show a demo uh, covering some of these uh, problems that we talked about and see how we help address that particular need. So I'm going to log into our uh, SaaS platform. It's a demo account where we have uh, the solution deployed on four Windows, two Linux, and one Mac OS X operating system. Before getting into the specifics, I'll just quickly cover an overview on all the introduction sort of for our platform. So as I was saying, we have six different tools uh, coming together on a single console. We have endpoint management uh, uh, and asset management. The primary purpose here is to get continuous visibility to all the endpoints from the inventory perspective, and also from the point of knowing you know, what is the current security posture of these endpoint systems. And it also has a lot of actions built into it, which is uh, could be blocking access to certain applications or deploying software applications that are installing certain software, etc. Then we have vulnerability management performs a continuous scanning on a daily basis. So it takes about five to ten minutes to complete the scanning across all the endpoint systems, irrespective of the number of systems that are there. Then we have a patch management system helps roll out the security patches related to uh, fixing these vulnerabilities that are identified and automating that whole exercise. Compliance management tool helps uh, identify deviations to certain benchmark industry guidelines like PCI, FAPR, technical guidelines like NIST and CIS and all of those. So identify those deviations and also the, the good part is that it also helps mitigate those deviations to bring the devices to a compliant posture on a regular, on a, on a continuous basis. And then we have an EDR tool helps detect indicators of attack and compromise and respond to those in real time. So each of these tools have a dashboard of its own. So if you look at asset management, gives uh, inventory, hardware, software, license violations, if there are any uh, outdated application, blacklisted applications, etc. And then we have an endpoint management tool, as I was saying, for the granular visibility to all the endpoint activities, like all uh, example is open ports. So all the ports that are open, which process is uh, running that particular port and uh, which device uh, is listening on that particular port. So likewise, we have pre-built uh, queries or checks that anybody could run and get instant visibility to everything like the Additional examples could be all the users under the administrator group who has currently logged in uh, to each of these systems, what processes are running, what services are running, is uh, bit locker enabled or disabled. So these are all the services in their current state. So these are just a click away and we have a number of checks for all the family of operating systems, including Linux and Mac OS X. And we also have some important checks like identifying the segment of different network, the DNS, DSCP data, tracking antivirus softwares, whether they are installed, uh, running signature data is up to date and in protection is enabled or not. 
real time uh, monitoring of each of these endpoints from the utilization of cpu ram disk and network uh, traffic so these are all the the checks that are there and actions are also uh, possible where you can block access to certain applications or uh, devices like usb mass storage etc software deployment allows uh, one to update uh, install software applications across all the endpoint systems so these are pre-packaged one but you can also upload your own application into the repository and roll them out additional controls like process uh, management registry editing service control network settings management uh, systems can be controlled like reboot or shutdown, etc. Files can be quarantined or deleted. Startup programs uh, can be uh, altered or edited. And then we also have security settings that can be uh, enabled or disabled. So this is the endpoint management tool. And uh, we have vulnerability management tool, which is the risk assessment part that I was talking about. 8,000 vulnerabilities in these uh, seven systems. Vulnerability severity, based on the severity of each of these vulnerability, you can cl classify what should be remediated quickly or not. And uh, we also do another interesting thing, which is to map this vulnerability to a potential ransomware or a malware that could exploit the vulnerability if we don't patch that particular vulnerability that is there. So this is essentially helping to prioritize the rolling out of the fixes or not. Uh, immediate basis. So vulnerability uh, scanner also identifies all the software applications that are vulnerable, devices that are vulnerable, and their total number of vulnerabilities, and the mitigation. Uh, what are all the patches that need to be rolled up to fix these vulnerabilities? So VM is a reporting tool, runs a continuous uh, scanning every day, and whenever you log into the portal, what you see is the latest information uh, as far as the risks are concerned. concerned. And let's look at how to mitigate these risks. So I was saying patch management is one of the um, the primary activity that one could do to mitigate these risks. So it says 80 plus percent of the devices require patching. 60 percent of the software applications need updates. There are the most critical patches. This will help one achieve a compliance goal. Let's say someone wants to achieve 90% patch compliance. You can do those selections and create the patching activity to roll out that. It provides additional information like what is already installed, what is being installed. And, uh, and there are controls like, do you want to reboot the system? Do you want to uh, tag some scripts to be run along with uh, the patching activity? And if there's a production, environment do you want to test it in an identical setup and roll out so those are all the workflow sort of things that are uh, there built into the, the tool set and uh, one of the uh, unique thing that we also do is track all the firmware or the hardware drivers and update them there is a rollback capability and there is also an automation rule that one could create based on the software applications on a scheduled basis, as and when vulnerability is there, go ahead and patch automatically without any user intervention. So you can select those and create such automation rule. So that is patch management. And then we have compliance management, which helps uh, identify deviations for a particular guideline, industry guideline or technical guidelines. So we have benchmarks and templates available for various, various uh, standards. So you can customize those, uh, create a benchmark, assess all the devices against that particular benchmark and whatever deviations that are identified uh, are displayed here so you can mitigate these deviations also through the remediations actions that we have uh, pre-built for every deviation and once those deviations are applied um, the devices would run another scan and uh, with the, the expectation is that it this benchmark becomes 100 percent compliant so this way you can automate the whole uh, exercise of identifying the deviations and mitigations to a daily routine. So if a device becomes out of compliance today uh, if because of the, the rule that is running, so it will bring the device back to a compliant state. And finally, we have an EDR tool. Uh, the primary purpose here is to detect indicators of attack and compromise and respond to uh, these potential symptoms of an attack. So we have both uh, detection rules and response rules that one could create based on various uh, uh, parameters where we can 
create probes and uh, run these probes quickly within a few seconds you will get the response back and uh, and if there is an indicator of attack you can go ahead and respond to those so things like this if remote desktop is enabled smb even is enabled in any of the system anonymous uh, smb share so uh, huge number of these uh, security controls can be quickly assessed and, uh, and if there is a problem you act upon that one of the uh, attack method is uh, to the first thing that some of these attacks do is to disable antivirus or a firewall or a uac microsoft windows uac control so we can track those also in real time and see if such attacks are uh, there and we can realize that and roll out a response rule to uh, clean them up. So all of these tools are coming together on a single console, uh, fully automated in terms of their ability to do those checks that are pre-built. And you can add more into this platform, I mean, into the, the checks and then automate the response capability as well. So this is a quick overview of our tool that we have. So coming back to uh, some of the attacks that we demonstrated. So a high profile vulnerability is uh, identified and today, and you want to patch that immediately. So you have option of uh, doing those quick checks. Uh, so we talked about WinRAR or WinRAR showed a demo of that uh, WinRAR attack. So you can just do a search and see how many systems have WinRAR. And uh, the important thing is that if this particular WinRAR vulnerability is there. Sure enough, so that particular system has that particular uh, vulnerability that we demonstrate, which can cause the attack. Now, the response to this, as I was saying earlier, could be rolling out a patch if the patch is available. So let us see if the patch is there for this. So you can just do another quick search and see, yes. So WinRAR, this particular version can be upgraded. So select this particular patch and create a job. It will go ahead and fix that particular vulnerability on that system. And uh, if we try that attack once again, uh, so the, the attackers will not be able to succeed uh, in launching that attack. So likewise, uh, there are these vulnerabilities that uh, where patches a possible remediation. But we also uh, saw attacks could be, so for example, WannaCry exploited a vulnerability in the SMB protocol of Microsoft's uh, Windows systems. And uh, if SMB version one, which is the very old version of uh, SMB protocol is being talked by these uh, systems, that could pose a big danger because number of vulnerabilities, number of attacks have exploited this successfully. So if we go ahead and see either in the compliance management tool or the EDR tool, there are a few systems where SMB v1 is enabled. We can also do a simple search like this to see if SMB v1 is there. There are two systems where SMB v1 is enabled. So likewise, we can uh, identify these potential risks and threats and respond to each of these. So let's take another real-time example where you want to see if uh, running services are uh, uh, if there is a malicious service that is added. So here is all the services that are running. And if you want to, for example, one of the attack, uh, WinRAR uh, particular attack did was to first disable the, the firewall system. So in this particular system, there are two, in this particular check, there are two systems where the firewall is disabled. And if you want to submit this query to the endpoints, there are four systems that are Windows, so in quick seconds, we can figure out if firewall is disabled or enabled. So we have response from one system already. Whatever systems that are live at this point in time, you'll start uh, seeing the response from them and then refresh this to see if uh, firewall is enabled or disabled on any other system. Looks like there's only one active uh, endpoint at this point in time. But as you can see, uh, within a few seconds, you'll, you'll be able to get the response and then act upon these responses to enable the firewall once again or uh, change certain firewall policies 
all of these can be the responses. So basically we have a platform that will allow one to perform these quick checks. So Blue Keep is one of the major uh, exploiter uh, zero day attack that exploited certain vulnerabilities in Windows. So you have these systems that are prone to that attack. Uh, we showed Google Chrome had a zero day exploit uh, prior to the patching and that was called the wizard opium. So if you search for this particular keyword, there is one system that is having that vulnerability. So we can figure out or uh, get instant visibility to these and then act upon that as a response. So all in all, um, a tool that brings in multiple, uh, a platform that brings in multiple cybersecurity use cases into one single console provides continuous visibility to all the endpoint activities, performs a risk assessment exercise on a daily basis, and then helps roll out these uh, uh, mitigation or response mechanisms, depending on what you would want to uh, apply as a solution. Uh, of course, this has other additional capabilities like reports, alerts, and audit log tracking and all of that. All right, so with that demo, I would, uh, I think time is also kind of running out, so I will conclude the, the demo at this point. Thanks, Chandra, for taking us through Senano platform and uh, showing a different and probably an interesting approach in discovering and mitigating security risks. And with that being said, we are happy to take any questions that the audience might have. All right, I already see some uh, questions. A question from Arun Bahal, how about uh, SAP, Oracle, MSSQL, and other type of DB coverages? Yes, so we do cover these uh, enterprise applications like uh, the Oracle applications of Microsoft SQL and uh, MySQL, PostgreSQL, and all of those vulnerabilities as well, part of our uh, checking mechanism. Does this cover network devices? Uh, at this point in time, no. This is only looking at uh, uh, endpoint systems. When I say endpoint systems, it is the desktop, laptops, and the, the servers. Uh, not the endpoint system. There is another question from uh, Vaishnavi. So do we have a trial version? Yes, there is a trial version uh, for someone to log in to our senernow.com portal and uh, try the, the whole solution uh, free for a month period. Yeah, a similar question from Arun. Can we get a, a trial license for uh, clients as well? Yes, uh, as a partner, uh, you have these access to, to implement these in your customer environment. Uh, there is one more question. DIP with DRM? No, that is not the, the scope. At this point in time, we don't have the tool for uh, data specific uh, security requirements. Question from Milan, does this product have integration with uh, Black Duck in tools? Uh, I need to understand Milan, I, I think we'll have to come back to you with the answer for this particular tool. So I'll, I'll have to take, check with our technical team and see how this can be integrated. Question from uh, Chandra Shekhar, any recommendation from Gartner? Uh, no, we have not gone for uh, a Gartner review or any of these. So, it is, uh, so the value, what we want to showcase is, uh, is there in the platform and uh, anyone wants to try it out, there is a free uh, trial available as well. So people can try out and realize the value. We do have some, some research reports conducted by different agencies like ESG and all that. So the, those reports are accessible from our web portal as well. Question from uh, Suhas, uh, does SecPod make Rapid7 redundant? That is uh, a very good question, Suhas. So we talked about periodic assessment exercise, which is being done monthly or quarterly uh, by an AL exercise. So these auditing exercises are really required. I also uh, brought in an analogy with uh, financial auditing, external auditing is definitely a requirement. So 
the tools uh, like Rapid7 and uh, Nessus and Qualys are built with this uh, idea of performing a security assessment periodically and making sure that everything is in place. Well, our tool is more of a IT security operations type of a, a usage where you're doing this on a continuous basis, identifying the vulnerabilities and potential threats, and also having the Someone capability to mitigate these vulnerabilities and uh, respond to the, the threats as well. So, uh, well, while the, the security assessment should go on, uh, basically, to if if organization has implemented our solution you are expected to get a really good audit report as against uh, identifying a large number of vulnerabilities and deviations. Question from uh, Shri Kumar. Yes, cloud servers uh, are we supporting? Yes, we do support uh, cloud instances as well. So you can run on the, the virtual instances uh, in any of the cloud environment. Uh, question from Venkatapati is, is your seventh tool launched already? We are in the process of launching the, the seventh tool. So we are working on the file integrity monitoring tool that is uh, being launched end of December. I know. So the, the idea is... Uh, this is what we mean. <laughs> Tiago, there is disturbance. Sorry. Uh, the seventh tool is uh, uh, being launched. So file integrity monitoring with the idea of identifying any integrity issues uh, within the file system or the process or the network environment and identify if there is a change. Real-time detection of these things and, uh, and perform a security analysis on that to find out if there is a, an incident and act upon those incidents. Question from uh, Gaurav. I have two questions. Uh, I don't see the question, so maybe you have it in the, in the next one. So I'll take that up as I scroll through other questions. How do you compare uh, SecPod with uh, Cyber Observer? Uh, I again need to come back to you on this, uh, Suhas. So we will get back to you uh, with a comparison from SecPod uh, to Cyber Observer too. Yeah, question from Gaurav now, so is it agent-based tools? Yes, so we have an agent uh, that needs to be deployed on all of the endpoints that are being managed and monitored. So we have agents available for all of Microsoft platforms, uh, major distributions of Linux and uh, Mac OS X operating system. Uh, question from Mukesh, is it working on cloud platform? Yes, uh, we have deployed on a number of uh, cloud environment, including AWS and Google and uh, uh, Azure as well, but it can be uh, deployed within even the, the private cloud environment. So we have one customer uh, who is offering desktop, virtual desktop service, and they are using our solution in the back end to provide PCA compliant, HIPAA compliant uh, systems uh, as a service. Can we replace Saner with traditional antivirus? Uh, Satish question, uh, question from Satish. Uh, no Satish, so we are not uh, looking at replacement of uh, antivirus as, a, as an approach. So we are more on the prevention side where you are taking care of the cyber hygiene aspects of it to prevent the attacks from succeeding where antivirus uh, comes into picture post an incident. So if an incident were to occur, how do you clean up that particular uh, incident uh, on a best effort basis. So our, our uh, tool sets are all built with uh, prevention as a primary goal. Uh, I've now reached the second question from Gaurav. How will it get updated from either central repository or uh, directory from Microsoft or OEM vendors? So we uh, have a, a team and process that is looking at all of these on a daily basis. So we have a security uh, research team that is performing this activity and then uh, managing and maintaining this repository uh, to be made available to all of our customers on a daily basis. So which is one of the uh, you know, unique thing that we also provide. So a daily uh, security intelligence update and uh, repository update is happening. Question from uh, Siley, it's only cloud-based or on-premise also? So we have both uh, cloud as well as on-premise uh, deployment. Uh, 
Um, so an organization preferring to go for a non-premise, uh, the deployment is fairly simple and easy. So we should be able to deploy it in on-premise deployments as well. Does you, you know, do you support all kinds of Linux flavor? Yes. So all the major distributions of Linux uh, are covered, including uh, Red Hat, CentOS, um, Amazon Linux, Oracle Linux, Ubuntu, Debian, uh, Linux Mint, and some of these platforms are all covered. Can it be integrated with any SIM tool? From a question from Mukesh. Yes, it is possible. So we have REST API set uh, can pull out any of the information from our tool and uh, integrate it with uh, a SIM for uh, threat analysis purposes or use cases. Is there an option to change the time format uh, UTC to IST? Uh, so we are uh, reporting is uh, at this point in time UTC. There is a feature request that we are working on to uh, present the time in the IST format or any other uh, configured time format. We will be adding that. Uh, question from Rizwan: Can can you generate scheduled reports from the tool? Yes. So reports can be scheduled to run periodically, daily, weekly, or on a monthly basis. And uh, report, apart from taking a backup of this report, it will also send out an email to the given list of uh, uh, email addresses. Question from Arun: uh, How is the costing is per user or per year? So we have uh, a per endpoint system and uh, and uh, based on the number of uh, tools that you subscribe to. Uh, so there is an annual uh, pricing based on that. Question from Siley, uh, how much space does it consume from endpoint systems? Uh, the installer itself is about uh, 12 to 13 MB in size. Uh, once it is installed, it should take about 200 to uh, 250 MB of uh, disk space, depending on uh, uh, different flavors of operating system. And the agent itself is uh, pretty lightweight and uh, can be typically completed within five to 10 minutes. And uh, it runs in the background so the user would not see any performance uh, degradation of any kind. Uh, question from Mukesh, can can we find out the application which is not available on a laptop? Uh, sorry, uh, Mukesh, I didn't fully understand the question. Uh, could you please elaborate that? Uh, question, next question, Shri, question from Shri Kumar, what are the questions we must ask which can get a quick yes for PIVO or an order? That's a very interesting question, Shri Kumar. So typically, uh, as I was uh, talking earlier, automation, so the industry is kind of tuned to a periodic uh, risk assessment. So typically a VA or a PT uh, assessment services is what the industry is tuned to. And most of the organizations uh, want this activity to be performed once in a quarter or a biennial exercise. And as I was saying earlier, uh, so if you ask certain probing questions like how often do you do a vulnerability assessment exercise? and also present some of these information like the day-to-day -day vulnerability statics, statistics and also see how we are remediating. So what is the follow through uh, post, a, post a risk assessment exercise? Most organizations have non-satisfactory type of an answer. So the question then is, can we do this on a daily basis and help you automate the, the risk assessment and mitigation activity? so that uh, the auditing exercises uh, that, that they run periodically is uh, fully vulnerability free and eliminate the, the, the malware and ransomware type of attacks uh, as, as a security effectiveness type of a platform. And uh, so those are some of the questions that we could ask. Um, are you performing risk assessment periodically? If Periodically means, does it mean on a daily basis? If it is a daily basis, are there a, is there a follow through in terms of the mitigation? Uh, for if mitigation is being performed on a periodic basis, what is the scope and uh, is it only Microsoft? Are you also looking at third party applications? Uh, what about heterogeneous environment like Linux and Mac OS X and all that? So typically that is uh, 
No, it will perform most automation. That is where the value that we bring in, in order to automate this whole exercise into a, a daily routine and eliminate the uh, attack surface and prevent the attacks and also get a better uh, security audit report post and assessment. So question from Gaurav, uh, follow up with my question too. If Microsoft releases patches on Tuesday of the month, when will it upload in your repository? We have an SLA uh, that uh, ensures that within the 24 hours of the, the public announcements of the Microsoft uh, updates, those get added into our repository. Question from Gaurav, is it multilingual tool? Uh, no, English is the only tool that is, uh, English is the only language that is supported at this point in time. Question from Vishnu, for Linux endpoints, is it possible to get username or login details? Uh, you can get to know who has logged in and, and all of those details. Uh, of course, not the credentials to log in, uh, but you, you know which user has logged in. Question from Suhas, how does your capability in threat detection different from vendors offering threat intelligence services? Uh, so the threat detection capabilities uh, relying on uh, some of the in-house uh, vulnerability intelligence and threat intelligence that we have. So at this point in time, we do not uh, subscribe to the external threat intelligence is all in-house uh, driven. Question from uh, Chandra Shekhar, which vulnerability engine do you use to do vulnerability test? We do not integrate with any other vulnerability tool. It is our own tool. So we have a vulnerability scanner that is part of our solution, which is performing the assessment exercise. So typically, uh, most of the solutions are, uh, are integrating with uh, one of these top vulnerability scanners and then uh, and then presenting that information uh, in our case it is not so all of these six tools are our own tools so we don't integrate with any other external tool to to serve these particular use cases question from shubharaj how frequent the agent will get updated and is the the user will get the notification about the update so the agent upgrade uh, if you're talking about the vulnerability intelligence and the threat the data and all that this is updated on a daily basis so automatically it gets updated and the user intervention is not required if you're talking about the feature upgrade so we have a scheduled uh, quarterly release uh, which agents are automatically getting upgraded again so and there is no user intervention required Question from Chiran GV, can I integrate the visor tool with my sim tool? Yes, so we have the APIs available, so you can pull out any of these information that you are seeing on the dashboard and uh, feed that data into any other sim tool. So we would be able to help with that integration activity. I think I went through all of the questions that were uh, post as of now if any further question we can wait for uh, a minute or two before concluding this uh, chandra i think we have left one more question uh, i think uh, what is the usp of sena now riswan ahmed Oh, okay. Sorry. Let me look into that. What is the USP of the CNN now, Rizwan? Yes. So the USP that we were talking uh, from the, the presentation part and also through the demonstration, uh, basically the problem that is uh, uh, the industry is facing today is because of these uh, periodic security auditing while the newer vulnerabilities are being discovered on a daily basis. Attacks are continuing to exploit these vulnerabilities on a daily basis. 
So the USP is, can we automate this into a daily routine, of finding the, getting visibility to all the IT assets, performing a risk assessment on a daily basis, and you have an integrated remediation capability where you can pull out the security patches or uh, other uh, mitigation mechanisms or response mechanisms on a, on a daily basis. So that is the primary uh, value that we are bringing in. So what is a value uh, that a customer gets out of this? One is, of course, uh, the security effectiveness. So you are automating this process into a daily routine and uh, you are mitigating the vulnerabilities and responding to threat before an attacker could exploit these vulnerabilities and, uh, and uh, make use of those vulnerabilities uh, to launch further attacks. So that is the primary value that we bring in. Continuous visibility, continuous risk assessment, and continuous mitigation uh, and potential threat indicator identification and response as a prevention mechanism before an attack uh, takes place. So, that is one uh, value. The other side of the benefit is that, uh, as you saw in the demo, we have six different tools coming together on a single platform. So eliminating the need for investing in multiple tool set from visibility point of view, risk assessment point of view, and mitigation point of view. So all of those tools are uh, within a single console. So it significantly reduces the complexity of having to deal with multiple point solutions and also brings down the cost uh, significantly as far as security uh, investment is concerned. Uh, we have one more question from Charvan. Yes, mostly patches require reboot, which can be done only during maintenance as production servers can't be rebooted every day. Sometimes the immediate upgrade of an application like Java, etc., is not possible as the code might not work for the upgrade version. How do you propose to perform remediation on production server? It's a really good question, uh, uh, Shravan. So Production server patching is definitely a different ball game altogether. You cannot bring down the system and you cannot also do a patching uh, without having a maintenance uh, schedule. So uh, what we do, uh, of course, the rebooting can be scheduled to a particular time. So you can go ahead and remediate it and then you choose a reboot window and then reboot those systems if a patch requires a reboot. So that is one part of that. and. Uh, the other part of the question is like the Java uh, or a development platform that Java or Python or any of these cannot be easily upgraded, which can actually break the applications that are built around that. So we have mechanisms to exclude these in patching and, uh, and uh, go ahead and with the, the patching of other applications and uh, software instances. But having said that, should we not do the uh, patching for Java or, or any of these HTTP environment, we definitely must do it. So one of the capability that we have uh, for rolling out patches for production server, we always recommend to have an identical test bed where you can roll out these patches. Uh, part of the workflow itself, where you uh, roll out the patches, test them and make sure that all of the applications are working as they were working before, and then approve these patches to the production environment and you can choose kind of a schedule when you want to do it like after seven days or at a particular time etc so these are various controls that are available part of the workflow itself and uh, so the system will identify that and it will go ahead and rule out those on a production environment so that is um, that is how we recommend rolling out patches on a production environment but for a, uh, general desktops laptops and all that we should not have these kind of issues. Uh, you can more or less send out an automation rule to periodically patch the systems. And one of the other capability that we have is also a rollback facility. If a patch is causing some problem, you have the option of rolling that back or uninstalling that patch to get back to your previous uh, state. Question from Suhas. When you talk about compliance management, are you referring to compliance with various frameworks like regulation, NIST, COVID, et cetera, with a given customer, which are given? Yes. So we are talking about these uh, regulatory uh, standards like PCI, FIFA, 
and also uh, technical controls like NIST 853 uh, 171 CAS controls and all of those. So we, we do have templates available for each of these uh, specific guidelines, which an organization can customize according to uh, their specific need. Because some of the, uh, the regulatory standards like PCI, they just say, do you have a password policy in place, but they are not going to specific, uh, go to the specific saying, what is the length of the characters? complexity of the passwords and all that. So that is where the customization is needed, where you feed in the data and uh, uh, the values that are relevant to your organization and then create a benchmark out of that and run a scan, get the deviations and mitigate those deviations. So the compliance management tool that we have is primarily looking at the hardening or security hardening point of view which is the example that I gave you is password policy or encryption strength. So each operating system will have 300 to 400 different checks that can be performed, deviations identified and mitigated. Now beyond this, uh, if you look at uh, PCI, HIPAA or any of these uh, guidelines, you will see that there are rules which talk about performing an asset management exercise, vulnerability scanning as an activity, patch management as an activity, tracking if uh, antivirus softwares are installed up to date and running is another activity. Uh, performing the search across all the systems to find if there are sensitive data uh, enabled. So uh, requirements like this are also part of the PCI guideline. Now, if you look at our, look at our tool set, we do have coverage for all of these requirements beyond the configuration hardening itself. So uh, a good percentage of the PCI DSS requirements are covered and automated. All right, uh, at this point in time, I would like to uh, take a moment to thank all of you to be part of this uh, webinar. We actually ended up uh, running out of the time, so I think more than 20 minutes over. Uh, sorry for uh, keeping all of you held uh, for more time than what was planned. Uh, but I would like to thank you for the amount of interest and the number of uh, questions that, that you all posed. Hope this was a useful session. And if you have further questions, you can reach out to us and uh, your email IDs and contact details are available with you. Thank you, everyone. Uh, yes, uh, thanks Chandra. Thanks for answering all these questions. Uh, and uh, thanks for the audience uh, for your patience and for your questions too. And it was very nice having you here. See you the next time with the next set of interesting webinars. Have a nice day, you everyone. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.